Have you ever been programming something and thought, well, this is pretty neat and all, but I think it needs to look a bit more like abstract art? No? You didn't think that? Someone did. And that's why we have Peet. Peet is a programming language created by David Morgan Marr. The goal of Peet is for programs to look like abstract art. It was originally going to be called Mondrian, but that was already taken by a scripting language. I guess it's not taken anymore, however, since the link now points to a domain parking page. Peet programs are made up of blocks called codals. A codal is basically an enlarged pixel, and they can be any size as long as they are still square shaped. They are called codals, so you don't confuse them with the actual pixels of the screen. A color block is a block made up of multiple codals of the same color. They can be any shape, and they can contain holes. Codals that only touch the block diagonally, however, are not considered part of the block. Programs are run using a direction pointer, which can point in any of the orthogonal directions. There is also a codal chooser, which chooses the leftmost or the rightmost codal touching the edge of the current block to execute next. The codal chooser's directions are relative to the direction pointer. This can be somewhat difficult to understand, so imagine you are the direction pointer standing on this block, and you are facing to the right. There are two options for the next command, these two blocks. So, which one do you go to next? Well, if the codal chooser was facing left, you would go to the one on your left. And if the codal chooser was facing right, you would go to the one on your right. The codal chooser points to the left by default, and the direction pointer points to the right by default. Pete's programs are made of 20 different colors, but only 18 of them are used for instructions. Each color change you make is treated as a command based on the hue and lightness change. The hue and lightness changes always go in the same order, so if you went from cyan to green, that would be five steps, not one. If you went from dark yellow to light yellow, that would be counted as one darker. There are 17 commands in all. Here's what they do. Push. This pushes a value onto the stack, which contains all the variables of the program. Because of that, variables are always pushed to the top. The value pushed is equal to the amount of codals in the block you just left. Pop. This pops a value off the stack and discards it. Again, since this is a stack, the top value is popped off. Add. Pops the top values off the stack, adds them, and then pushes the sum back onto the stack. It does the same thing with subtract, multiply, and divide, just with the operation switched. Also, note that when dividing and subtracting, it subtracts or divides the second value by the top value. Mod. This divides the top two numbers in the same way as the divide operation, but it pushes the remainder. If the divisor is negative, the number pushed is also negative. Not. Pops the top value. If it's zero, it pushes a one. Otherwise, it pushes zero. Greater. Pops the top two values. If the second value is larger than the first, it pushes a one. Otherwise, a zero is pushed. Pointer. Pops the top value, and if the number is positive, it rotates the direction pointer clockwise that many times. If the number is negative, it rotates the direction pointer counterclockwise that many times. Switch. Pops the top value, and switches the direction of the codal chooser that many times. If the top value was even, that would make this very pointless. Roll. Pops the top two values off the stack. It brings the third value to a depth equal to the second value. It repeats this function as many times as the first value popped. Duplicate. Pops the top value, and pushes it back onto the stack twice. Input number. Waits for the user to input a number, and pushes it onto the stack. Input character. Waits for the user to input a character, and pushes the Unicode ID of it. Output number. Pops the top value of a stack, and outputs it. Output character. Pops the top value of the stack, and outputs the Unicode character that corresponds to that number. There are also black codals, which control the direction of the direction pointer. When the direction pointer hits it, it rotates clockwise, and it toggles the codal chooser. It keeps doing this until it's able to continue moving. If it gets stuck, the program ends. White codals are codals that do... NOTHING! Well, if two codals are separated by white, then no operation will happen at all, so they are good for making your code easier to read. Now, let's look at some programs that actually do things. Here's a Hello World program. Um, isn't this the Hello World program for Pete? Well, yes, that also works. Both programs work, but that one just looks so much nicer. Now, let's go through how a program is made. Like my previous video, I'm going to make a program that just outputs the language's name. And no, I'm not going to try making it look like an actual Mondrian painting, even though someone actually did that. The first thing you would want to do is output the letter P, which has the Unicode value of 80. By the way, for common characters, the Unicode values are the same as the ASCII values. Anyway, we need to somehow get 80 onto the stack. While you could just plop down 80 pixels, 
I instead pushed 8 to the stack, pushed 10 to the stack, it multiplied. Next, we need to duplicate, since outputting a character pops it off the stack, and we'll need that value later. Next, we can print the character to the screen. Now we can push 7 to the stack, and subtract it from the second value on the stack, the 80, and we will get 73, the value for i. Now, we can duplicate and output. We can use the same method to get e and t, we just modify the already existing number on the stack until it reaches the value for each character, duplicate it, and then output it as a character. At this point, I decided to change the direction the program moved in. I made it move downwards instead of to the right. This wasn't necessary in this case, but it was when I made the Hello World program. Also, if you have any extra space left, you can use it to draw pictures and make your program look nice. I did this with my Hello World program, adding my channel's name into the image. If you see this video on a channel that's not Trottle one this video was stolen! Remember the adding program I made in the last video? Well, I made it in Pete! It's much easier to create an adding program in Pete than in Brain using only 5 commands. Also, it's actually able to go up past 9! Yay! But an adder is too simple. So I made a program that can either add or subtract! Hooray! This program makes use of the greater and pointer commands, which allow the program to take different paths based on what is inputted at the start. If you type a plus, it will add. If you type a minus, it will subtract. Anyway, if you want to use Pete yourself, you can download NPete, as well as my programs, in the description. Thanks for watching!